Welcome to the second part in our discussion on per unit quantities. Now in the first video, we defined what per unit quantities are and I wanted you to remember this formula. Per unit quantities are nothing but actual values divided by base values. And if you're given per unit values, then you cal calculate the actual value by multiplying it by that base value for that system and for that particular quantity. In today's discussion, I'm going to give you the steps of calcul of um, of manipulating these values. If you're given the actual values and um, you're asked to define per unit um, values, how do you go about doing that? And more importantly, what I'm going to talk about today is the four electrical quantities that we mostly deal with and how we can go about manipulating these quantities. Four electrical quantities that we deal with most often, right? These are voltage, current, impedance, and power, electrical power and I am talking about complex power here. So S and impedance Z, current I, voltage V. We are familiar with the units for these which we spoke about last time as well and volt amps for complex power, not watts. Watts is for real power P, right? Now, the beauty about these four is that once you know any two of them, the other two can be calculated. How do we do that? The very famous Ohm's law, which we're all familiar with, gives us a relationship between voltage, current, and impedance, right? So once we know any two of them, you can calculate the other. So V equal to IZ, which implies Z equals to voltage power current, or current is voltage over impedance. What we also know is that complex power is V times I, which implies S can be written as we can substitute for I from here, which makes it V square by Z. My two and Z look almost the same, so let me just change that, not to cause any confusions. So V times two. Uh, sorry, V square over Z, right? So basically what I'm saying is as long as you know any two of these, you can get the other two. Why is this important now you ask me? Good question. This is important because what this tells me is as long as I can define two quantities, I can calculate the other two, which means as for my power systems, if I have the base, if I define the base for any two, of these quantities, I can calculate the base for the other and I can calculate all the rest of the values in per unit or actual. I am going to solve an example so you understand this better. We leave this here. What I will also write here is for your benefit, per unit is actual over base. So this will help us understand understand what we're doing. So this is my example here. Just imagine we have a circuit with a resistor. The voltage across these two nodes is, let's say, I'm going to say 500 volts. The current is, let's say, 5 amps. Those are the only two values you know. I've asked you to find the resistance uh, and I have asked you to find the complex power. The first method of solving this, the traditional method, is simply V equal to IR, we know that, which implies R is going to be V over I, which is 500 over 5, which gives me 100 ohms. And S is equal to V over V by I, so 500 times 5 which is equal to 2500 volt amps or 2.5 kVA, right? Simple. 
And yes, if the circuit is as simple as this, you will use the traditional method. But the power system analysis that we're going to talk about, the systems that we're dealing with are going to be a lot more complex. And that is where power per unit quantities come in handy. But since we're just starting out and we want to understand how to use per unit, I have chosen this very simple circuit. So humor me here and let's solve this using our per unit method, right? Step one in per unit method is we define base values for known values, right? We define the base for the known, which implies we know here what voltage and current, right? So I'm going to define a base for them. I'm just going to choose arbitrarily a base, 1000 volts. And for my current base, I'm going to say, let's say 10 amps. My step two, I am going to calculate base for unknown quantities, which implies what do I not know? My resistance and my power. So my resistance base is nothing but my voltage base or my current base, which is equal to 100 ohms. And my power base is nothing but my voltage base. Let me write it here. So, and then that makes it 10,000 volt amp or 10 kVA, right? So far, so clear, simple enough. Third thing, what I do is I calculate my per unit for the known quantities. So my step three is this. What do I know? Voltage and current. I've been given actual, I have defined a base. So my voltage per unit would be the actual by the base, which is equal to 0.5 per unit. Remember this formula right here? That's what we are using. And my current in per unit is going to be five amps defined right here with my base 10 amps is going to give me 0.5 per unit so in this case my voltage and my current are both going to be 0.5 per unit what is my next step okay let me just not go down so much further but okay i need that space so our fourth step is we're going to calculate the per unit for the unknown. So R per unit is going to be V per unit over I per unit, which is 0.5 over 0.5, which is equal to one per unit. Excellent. And then my S per unit is going to be voltage per unit times current per unit which is going to be 0.25 per unit I'm multiplying 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 right simple enough so far now that I have my per unit I'm going to calculate my actual for the unknown because that was what our problem was right we need to get what our resistance and power values are. We have the per unit values, right? We have to get the actual values. So my R is nothing but R per unit times my R base, which is nothing but one times a hundred, which makes it hundred ohms. And my S is nothing but S per unit times S base, which is 0.25 times 10 kVA, which makes it 2.5 kVA. Answer number one for resistance and answer number two for, in, for power. Relate this to these two answers right here. Exactly same. 
which is what we expected right and these are your steps to calculate your per unit use your per unit values manipulate them to get your actual values understood brilliant and now we're going to i'm going to leave you with a sample problem as i always do that will help you better understand once you solve this yourself so let's say i have another circuit here okay let me not make this a resistance let me make this an impedance so let's say i make this an impedance z uh, the value of z let's say is what you have to find out for me um, current flowing i am not going to give you this value either and the voltage across is 5 kV the power is let's say 10 MVA I want you to do three things for me first solve for I and Z using traditional technique traditional technique I'm gonna give you so this is my voltage I'm gonna give you voltage um, I'm going to give you two bases. I'm going to give you first base as 100 kV and S base 1 as 100 MVA. And the other thing I want you to do is this. Take a base of 10 kV and take a base of 10 MVA. And again, even in this two cases, solve for i and z okay give me your answers in the comment sections let me know if you're having any problems with this i've defined all the steps so it should not really be very difficult for you to solve this the only thing i'd i'd uh, ask you to be careful about are the units this is kv mva mva here kv here be careful um, of the values you get at the end whether you get the current in amps kilo amps be clear um, and yeah hopefully this clarifies per unit quantities for you further how to use them how to manipulate them um, for the electrical quantities that we come across uh, voltage current impedance and power so stay tuned uh, we will do another video on per unit quantities this will uh, give you the real essence the real advantage of using them because I will be using transformers um, in the next example that we do in the next video so thanks once again and um, have fun take care